In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. This morning we are celebrating the 14th week of Ordinary Time, Wednesday, and as we gather in God's presence, let us be mindful of our sins and ask for God's mercy and healing in our lives. Lord Jesus, you heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. When hunger came to be felt throughout the land of Egypt, and the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, Pharaoh directed all the Egyptians to go to Joseph and do whatever he told them. When the famine had spread throughout the land, Joseph opened all the cities that had grain and rationed it to the Egyptians since the famine had gripped the land of Egypt. In fact, all the world came to Joseph to obtain rations of grain, for famine had gripped the whole world. The sons of Israel were among those who came to procure rations. It was Joseph, as governor of the country, who dispensed the rations to all the people. When Joseph's brothers came and knelt down before him with their faces to the ground, he recognized them as soon as he saw them. But Joseph concealed his own identity from them and spoke sternly to them. With that, he locked them up in the guardhouse for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to his brothers, Do this, and you shall live, for I am a God-fearing man. If you have been honest, only one of your brothers need be confined in this prison, while the rest of you may go and take home provisions for your starving families. But you must come back to me with your youngest brother. Your words will thus be verified, and you will not die. To this they agreed. To one another, however, they said, Alas, we are being punished because of our brother. We saw the anguish of his heart when he pleaded with us, yet we paid no heed. That is why this anguish has now come upon us. Reuben broke in, Did I not tell you not to do wrong to the boy? But you would not listen. Now comes the reckoning for his blood. The brothers did not know, of course, that Joseph understood what they said, since he spoke with them through an interpreter. But turning away from them, he wept. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. Sing to him a new song. Pluck the strings skillfully with shouts of gladness. Lord, let
let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. The Lord brings to naught the plans of nations. He foils the designs of peoples. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart through all generations. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. But see, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, Matthew the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them thus, Do not go into pagan territories or enter a Samaritan town. Go, rather, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven (coughs) is at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Although Jesus instructs his apostles to not go into pagan territory, It's not because Jesus is prejudiced or showing preferential treatment for the lost sheep of Israel. That's a first and easy interpretation, but it wouldn't be entirely accurate. God created everybody. God has no boundaries. God doesn't play favorites in that way. And in fact, if we look through Scripture, we can see that God crosses the boundary quite regularly. So when the Jews were enslaved to Egypt, God's providence has Moses find protection within Egypt and would eventually become the liberator of the Jews, having been raised in Egypt. In this particular first reading, we hear the story of Joseph, who is sold into slavery by his own Jewish brothers, by the, again, by the providence of God, ends up in Egypt, where, again, salvation comes from the form of food in the midst of a famine. Jesus himself is being persecuted by Herod, who is a Jew, technically, and escapes to Egypt for protection. So as much as the Jews would have a very strong opinion about Egypt, God has their salvation coming from there. So the question isn't so much about why they're not, supposed to, uh, they're not supposed to go into those territories, not because God is against them. We believe that we are all called to be disciples and eventually get the message of the gospel message out to all nations. So why is he telling them to stick to the lost house, or the sheep of the lost, lost sheep of the house of Israel? And I think it's the reason for that is they needed to hone their skills at evangelization. You would think it would be a lot easier for the apostles to convince the Jews who had this long tradition of the promised Messiah 
to hear that message of the Messiah having arisen or arrived than to tell people they have no clue about the history of what Jew the Jewish nation is waiting for. Additionally, they would have a common language, a common background, a common culture. It'd be easier for them to practice evangelization and then realize that they don't have all the answers yet. They would start to refine their beliefs and their understanding and how they articulate the message of Christ. There's a saying that you don't really understand something until you try to teach it. When you try to teach it, you realize you have to find different ways of articulating the same thing, expressing it different ways because people learn in different capacities in different ways. And the more you understand about how to articulate it, the more you actually understand it for yourself. So when I think, I think the whole world thinks like I do because that's how I operate. But it isn't until you talk to other people and you try to explain things that you realize that's quite different. And so I would imagine Jesus was trying to get the apostles to start off on the easy baby steps first. Talk to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then they'll smooth off your rough edges. Then you'll be able to expand a little bit further, a step at a time. So the message is for us, not just the apostles. We too are called to be disciples in this crazy world that we often think is pagan by comparison, godless, culture of death, as John Paul II called it. And so is it really that? Or is God actually calling us to cross that boundary after we've practiced our language on one another? As Catholics, we don't evangelize well. We think that that's the job of the church. But if we're going to express our faith to the next generation, we're the ones up for the task. As we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist, let us first bring our needs and intentions to our loving Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for blessings upon his leadership of the Church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For national and local leaders, may the Lord be their guide in responding to the cries of the most in need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick or disabled, May Christ, the divine physician, give them strength in their suffering and restore them to full health of mind and body, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a community of faith, may God grant us the grace to be Christ's hands in the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Danny Cachon, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all those who have died, May they experience fullness of joy with Christ and his mother Mary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions within our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust our prayers to you in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed of you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we have been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.